Good morning, and welcome again to Hot Chips 33. I'm Dave Ditzel, founder and executive chairman of Esperanto Technologies. Today, I'm going to talk about how Esperanto accelerates machine learning recommendation workloads using over a thousand RISC-V processors on a chip. The Esperanto supercomputer on a chip, version one, is the world's highest performance commercial RISC-V chip. On one seven nanometer chip, we put 1,088 energy efficient ET Minion RISC-V processors, each with its own vector tensor unit, four high performance ET Maxion RISC-V processors, over 160 million bytes of on-chip SRAM, and interfaces for external DRAM and flash memory. The chip can be operated as a standalone processor or as an accelerator connected over a PCIe bus interface. The chip can compute at peak rates between 100 and 200 teraops, depending on the operating frequencies. And it's able to operate using less than 20 watts of power. Over a thousand general purpose RISC-V processors can be put to work on many parallelizable workloads. But today we're gonna to focus on compelling performance per watt that this chip can provide for machine learning recommendation models. As recommendation is one of the most important problems for many hyperscale data centers. Now, machine learning recommendation workloads in hyperscale data centers have some of the most demanding performance and memory requirements, and they've been largely run on x86 servers. Demand for additional performance is growing rapidly, and rather than simply building more data centers and buying more servers, customers would like a way to increase the performance for inference on servers they already have installed. Often these servers have an available slot for a PCIe accelerator card, but it needs to meet some key requirements. First, the performance of the accelerator card needs to be substantially higher than the performance of the x86 toast CPU, which means the card needs to reach computation rates of 100 to 1,000 teraops. Second, the accelerator card has to fit into existing infrastructure where there may only be one PCIe slot available per server, and that slot will have a limited power budget, typically 75 to 120 watts. Google just published a paper on 10 key lessons from their TPU design experience. And one of those lessons is that for inference deployment at global scale, solutions must be air-cooled. So low power was very important. While a lot of inference can be done with 8-bit integer data, customers were also telling us that any solution needs to include support for both 16-bit and 32-bit floating point. An accelerator card should also have at least 100 gigabytes of storage in order to avoid excessive movement of data from the host. Having around 100 megabytes of on-die memory can significantly improve performance and substantially reduce many off-die memory references, which in turn can increase performance and reduce power. Recommendation problems have both dense compute and very large sparse memory accesses. In this way, they're quite different from the purely dense compute CNN operations one might see in the ResNet 50 benchmark. Computation mixed with very large, sparsely accessed data is challenging because the latencies to off-chip memory are very large, which may cause processing to stall. Finally, because machine learning workloads are evolving rapidly, fixed function hardware can quickly become obsolete. So the use of more general purpose programmable solutions is highly recommended. Esperanto picked the RISC-V instruction set as the foundation for our general purpose programmable solution. Now, let me explain how Esperanto's approach is different from some other inference accelerators and why we think Esperanto has a better approach, particularly for recommendation. Some of the other solutions use one giant hot chip that uses up the entire power budget of the accelerator card. Esperanto's approach is to use multiple low power chips that still fit within the power budget. There are a limited number of pins that one can practically put on a single chip package. So one chip solutions cannot go wide to get memory bandwidth and often end up with expensive memory solutions such as HBM DRAM. Esperanto's approach distributes the processing and IO across multiple chips. As more chips are added, performance increases, memory capacity increases, memory bandwidth increases, and low power and low cost DRAM solutions become a practical solution. Use of systolic array multipliers is common in other AI chips, and this does work well for dense computations like CNNs and can generate great ResNet 50 scores. 
But depending on overly optimized hardware often comes with a lack of flexibility. And often these solutions don't perform nearly as well when there are sparse memory accesses to off-chip memory. Esperanto avoids this over-specialization by using thousands of RISC-V cores as the basis for computation. RISC-V provides a general purpose instruction set, and we've added a number of vector and tensor instructions to further speed up the number of arithmetic operations per clock. This results in a far more flexible, programmable solution than many other accelerators. And for sparse accesses to large memory, the Esperanto solution provides thousands of threads to help deal with long memory latencies. On a chip with only a handful of CPU cores, anytime the problem does not map exactly onto the specialized accelerator, the amount of parallelism is limited by the small number of cores. In the Esperanto solution, the full parallelism of thousands of cores is always available to speed up execution. Single chip solutions often push for the highest operating frequencies, but this comes with very high power and it's not very energy efficient. Esperanto realized that transistors, particularly seven nanometer FinFETs, are much more energy efficient when operated at low voltages. Low voltage operation also significantly reduces operating power. To take advantage of this low voltage energy efficiency required substantial innovations to both circuits and modifications of the RISC-V core itself. Esperanto's challenge was how to put the highest recommendation performance onto a single PCIe-based accelerator card using no more than six of our chips and no more than 120 watts. Well, we could fit six chips on a 120-watt card if each chip took less than 20 watts. For simplicity of this example, we assume we could use 10 of those 20 watts for the 1,000 RISC-V cores meaning that each core could only use about 10 milliwatts. Power is simply CV squared F plus leakage. And to see how big an improvement we are proposing versus a conventional server chip, let's imagine these basic parameters for some hypothetical x86 CPU core. If this imaginary core took 165 watts for 24 cores, that would imply that each core would take about seven watts. We can also guess that at 0.85 volts, uh, it could reach a frequency of three gigahertz. And assuming 30% leakage, that means it would have a dynamic switching capacitance of 2.2 nanofarads. Now, in order for our ET minion core to operate using only 10 milliwatts of power, we'd have to get the overall power down by a factor of 700, which was quite a challenge. It was fairly easy to reduce operating frequency down by 3x to one gigahertz. That's just turning down the clock. We could also reduce the operating voltage by at least a factor of two. And since power is related to voltage squared, that would save another factor of 4x. But to operate robustly at low voltages is hard. We had to make a number of circuit and architecture changes. Operating at gigahertz levels at low voltages required designing with a very small number of gates per pipeline stage. Fab supply desk NSRAM cells also do not work at these low voltages. So Esperanto had to make both circuit and architecture changes for level one caches and register files. Even with these changes, there was still a gap of over 50 X. And the only way to make up this difference is to reduce the dynamic switching capacitance. Dynamic switching capacitance is the capacitance from each transistor and wire and how frequently those switch. And to reduce those, you must have a very simple architecture with very few logic gates. This is where RISC-V was a great solution for a base instruction set as it can be implemented with the fewest logic gates of any commercially viable instruction set. We also had to design our vector tensor unit very carefully as well. Now, let me show you an experiment we did that demonstrates the value of low voltage operation in achieving the best recommendation performance for our 120 watt card using a maximum of six chips. Here's a graph of the energy efficiency of a thousand ET minion cores running our internal recommendation benchmark at different operating voltages. In this experiment, we model the cores as being resynthesized for each particular voltage point. As a core optimized for a high voltage and high frequency, we'll have more capacitance from bigger buffers to overcome wire delay than a core op optimized for lower operating voltages. And for simplicity of this example, let's just assume that the only power we have to worry about is the Esperanto chip. 
Now, a common approach would be to try and run at the highest voltage to get the highest frequency. But if we did this, just one of our chips might use 275 watts, way over the 120 watt limit. So this does not work. Reducing the operating voltage to 0.75 volts, the nominal voltage in seven nanometer, would result in 164 watt chip, still way too high. Just to get under 120 watts of power, uh, on a single chip, we'd have to reduce the operating voltage of the minions to about 0.67 volts. But then that one chip would use up the entire power budget. But if we operate at the best energy efficiency point, the entire chip would consume only eight and a half watts. And the six chips would fit in the 120 watt budget with room to spare. Now with six chips, the performance would be two and a half times better than the 118 watt single chip solution and the energy efficiency 20 times better than trying to operate at the highest voltage. To maximize performance though, we should use up the entire available power budget. And if we operate around 0.4 volts, one chip would take about 20 watts, meaning we could use six chips and still be within the 120 watt power budget. Esperanto's a sweet spot. Uh, uh, for achieving best performance, will be usually uh, for operating our ET minions between 300 and 500 millivolts, that is nearest uh, the best energy efficiency points. And by using the in entire available power budget, we're four times better recommendation performance than a one chip solution. Low voltage operation is a key differentiator for Esperanto's ET minion design. Now let's see how the entire chip is put together, starting with the ET minion. The ET Minion is our proprietary custom-built processor compatible with the 64-bit RISC-V integer instruction set. The RISC-V integer pipeline is shown in yellow in the roughly to scale block diagram at the right. Esperanto has its own uh, tensor vector unit optimized for common machine learning data types. And you can see that the vector tensor unit takes far more area than the integer pipeline, supporting our premise that the area overhead for RISC-V is small. The core uses an in-order pipeline optimized to have very few gates per pipeline stage to improve megahertz when operated at low voltages. Two hardware threads of execution are supported. To simplify physical design on the chip, the entire processor operates on a single low voltage power plane. The vector tensor unit is optimized for 8-bit integer, 16-bit floating point, and 32-bit floating point operations, which are the common ML data types used for inference. Integer operations were deemed the most important, and the core can operate on 512 bits per cycle, resulting in 128 8-bit operations per cycle, with the results accumulating to 32-bit integers. Floating point operations can be processed 256 bits wide per cycle, resulting in 16 32-bit single precision operations per cycle, or 32 16-bit half precision operations per cycle. As a large percentage of execution time is spent performing tensor operations, Esperanto added new tensor instructions, and these greatly improve execution efficiency. Tensor instructions can utilize the full vector width every cycle and run for up to 512 cycles, meaning that a single tensor instructions can compute up to 64,000 operations. Tensor instructions manage data movement as well as compute and can utilize the data caches as a scratch pad for more efficient operation. This greatly reduces instruction fetch bandwidth requirements, which in turn reduces power consumption. During these long tensor instructions, the RISC-V integer pipeline is put to sleep, further making the overhead for providing RISC-V compatibility almost negligible. Physical design plays an important role as you can only go a limited distance in a single clock cycle and seven nanometer wires are relatively slow. We found it convenient to group eight minion cores together before wire length became a problem. These groups of eight minion cores are called a neighborhood, and we were able to use their physical proximity to make several architectural improvements. We're able to save power and improve performance by allowing these neighborhood cores to closely cooperate. For example, eight minion cores share a single large instruction cache. This was far more efficient than having each core have its own instruction cache with redundant copies of the same code. Another example, when one minion is doing a load from the second level cache, it's likely that the other seven minions are gonna be fetching the same data. 
Rather than doing eight separate loads from the level two cache of the same data, we have a cooperative load feature that allows all eight minions to receive the data using only one transfer from the L2 cache. These are just a few of the Esperanto innovations that allow highly parallel programs to compute more effectively than an array of standard processors. Now, four of these eight core neighborhoods are put together along with four megabytes of memory to form a 32 core minion shire. Each bank can be partitioned by the software to be either an L2 uh, private cache to that shire as scratch pad memory uh, or as L3 cache globally accessible across the entire chip by a global shared address space. Dense memory cells are required for these one megabyte SRAM banks, and they have to be operated at nominal supply voltages. Shires are connected to each other via an on-chip mesh interconnect on each shire. And to save power, the mesh stop and its very wide interconnect is also operated on a low voltage domain. To enhance the performance of these cooperating parallel processes, Esperanto has also added several new synchronization primitives. Here's another picture of how the shires are connected with the on-chip mesh. Now we can see how the entire chip fits together in this block diagram that also roughly corresponds to the physical layout on the chip. 34 ET minion shires contain 1,088 ET minion processors. On the left and right sides, eight memory shires contain the LPDDR4X DRAM controllers. On the top right, one Maxion IO shire contains the four ET Maxions and most of the other small IO signals. And one PCIe Shire contains a Gen 4 PCIe interface. Maximum chip power can be set with a software API, but for recommendation tasks, we expect a typical operating point will be under 20 watts. Here are the external chip interfaces, but you'll need to zoom into the slide later to see the details. Let's look at how the Esperanto chip might be used in a real system. Esperanto's low power technology allows six Esperanto chips and 24 64-bit wide DRAM chips to fit into the 120 watt power budget of the customer's PCIe card. One accelerator chip can hold up to 192 gigabytes of DRAM, providing up to 822 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. By using multiple chips, we can effectively have a 1536-bit wide memory interface using low cost and low power LPDDR4X DRAM, which would have been way too many pins for a single chip solution. This one accelerator card has over 6,000 RISC-V cores and 12,000 threads of execution, helps provide a good way to handle memory latency for the memory intensive portions of recommendation models. Here's a picture of how the six Esperanto chips could fit on an open compute project Glacier Point version two card. Each Esperanto chip is mounted on an OCP compliant dual M.2 module that also contains DRAM, flash memory, power supplies, and other circuitry. Peak performance for this one card would be over 800 teraops of int eight when all the ET minions are operating at one gigahertz. Here's an example of how Esperanto's chip could be deployed at scale in existing OCP data centers. Six chips mounted on six dual M.2 cards can be plugged into the one Glacier Point V2 accelerator card. Two Glacier Point V2 cards fit into a Yosemite V2 dual x86 server sled for a total of 12 chips. Four Yosemite sleds fit in a cubby, eight cubbies fit in an OCP rack. Therefore, each rack could hold 384 Esperanto chips. And with thousands of racks in a large data center, a large data center could potentially deploy millions of Esperanto accelerator chips. Of course, software is the key to making all the hardware work. And Esperanto will support C++, PyTorch, and other common ML frameworks. Our first ML compiler is based upon Glow, and we're also adding support for TVM. The compiler front ends do hardware independent optimizations, including dividing the work to run across multiple chips. The compiler back ends are modified by Esperanto to generate low level machine instructions for the Esperanto chip. Now let's look at some performance comparisons for recommendation. We use the MLPerf deep learning recommendation model benchmark scores as reported on the mlcommons.org website by the respective vendors except for Esperanto, where we give our projected performance. 
See the footnotes for all the details. The light green bars compare the relative performance of each accelerator card to the performance contributed by one server chip. The dark green bar charts compare the relative performance per watt of each accelerator card to the TDP power of one server chip. So for example, the MLPerf DLRM score for Intel was purported as 24,630 using eight server chips. We divided that number by eight to get the 3,079 samples per second for one chip. The performance and power numbers used for comparison of the bar charts here are shown in bold. One 120 watt accelerator card with six Esperanto chips has 59 times more performance than one 250 watt Intel server chip. Our position is that performance per watt is actually a better metric of performance since everyone ought to be measured at similar power usage. Esperanto expects our performance per watt to be over 123 times better than the server chip. So now I'm sure you're thinking, okay, that's a great recommendation score, but uh, what's your dry stone score? Okay, I'm just joking. I didn't really mean dry stone. I meant ResNet 50, which is the dry stone of our day. It's not a great benchmark either, but one that still everyone wants to see. So for comparisons, we've taken the best ResNet 50 scores reported by each of these vendors from the respective company websites and power from the data sheets. The formatted approach is like the prior slide. And again, see the footnotes for all the details. The numbers being compared here are shown in bold. Even on this compute dense benchmark, Esperanto expect to have over 25 times better performance per watt than the Intel server chip. For standalone operation running Linux or for portions of workloads that are not parallelizable, the Esperanto chip also includes four high performance uh, ET Maxion processors. The Maxions were not used in the ML recommendation benchmark shown today. And since we've described the Maxion in detail elsewhere, please see those references for more information. The Esperanto supercomputer on a chip has been fabricated in TSMC seven nanometer technology and contains over 24 billion transistors. You can see the various chip stats here. All the performance numbers for Esperanto shown so far are projections based upon gate level simulations of the entire chip on a large Synopsys Zebu hardware emulation system. The time of this recording, we recently received silicon in our labs and we're in the process of bringing up uh, uh, chip uh, testing. Here's the uh, first seven nanometer chip mounted in the package. Results on silicon in systems will be reported after we've completed bring up and software tuning. The Esperanto supercomputer on a chip is the highest performance commercial RISC-V chip announced so far. It has the most RISC-V cores on a single chip. It has the most RISC-V aggregate instructions per second on a single chip. And it has the highest number of tera ops on a chip driven by RISC-V cores. Esperanto's low voltage technology provides differentiated RISC-V processors with the best performance per watt. We hope we've convinced you that energy efficiency matters and that the best way to compare performance is to compare performance per watt. Making an energy efficient parallel processing system required many innovations and trade-offs between the processor and memory system architecture and the circuits and low voltage techniques that improve energy efficiency. Now we have that hardware part done. Uh, and we can take this modular architecture and easily scale it either up or down and port it to other semiconductor processes. If you're interested in becoming a customer of our chip boards or a full evaluation system, just send an email to chips at esperanto.ai. Thanks for attending our talk and we hope to hear from you.